25th edition of CNU TV, your only source for video news on campus. I'm Jillian Hooper. And I'm Paula Bruzzo. Thanks for tuning in. On this episode, we'll be bringing you the latest news, sports, and arts and entertainment. But first, in a Captain's Log exclusive, the university suites at Port Warwick are locked in a legal battle surrounding the definition of public property at the apartment complex. With increasing complaints from residents about the misuse of police force throughout the complex, the Port Warwick offices have decided to take legal action against the Newport News Police just this fall. The main focus of the litigation is surrounding the brick porches in front of the apartments, something deemed essential to the port life. For more information regarding this legal issue and steps you can take to prevent unlawful search and seizures, check out the full article in the Captain's Log. Also, CNU is working on expanding its pre-health program due to our rapid growing campus and how many students are involved in the science program. To go along with the goal of this program, the expansion of the science building is in its progress to create a greater capacity for students and faculty research. In local news, there was recently a debate at the Ferguson Center between state delegates Glenn Oder and Gary West. Seth Wagner was there to get the story and bring you the election results. Last Wednesday before the election, candidates for the 94th District, Glenn Oder and Gary West, held a final debate in CNU's own Ferguson Center for the Arts. And my goal is to listen to you, and my goal is to do what you want me to do to make you feel safe and secure and have a prosperous family right here in the city of New York. The experience of knocking on people's doors and hearing what's important to them has been very, very rewarding. If we don't act in the very near future, we're not going to qualify for federal maximum fines. We've got to make sure that Virginia is not in a situation where we bypass federal stimulus dollars for infrastructure improvements. Education, transportation, and endorsements were among the major issues discussed. Each candidate tried to convey why they would be the best choice to represent the city of Newport News. And it is the tenure that I take with me when I go back to Richmond every year. I've been your delegate for the last eight years. I'm telling you, I don't have a problem with going to Richmond and working for you. He is on the Virginia Education Association Hall of Wall of Shame. Republican candidate Glenn Oder won re-election on November 3rd, 2009. I'm Seth Wagoner for CNU TV. It was a good fight between the state delegates that represent CNU's district. It's good that CNU sponsors these types of forums to educate voters. Very true. Congrats on the winner of the race. Now let's head over to the weather desk to see what lies ahead for our weekly forecast. How's the weather looking for the first week in November, John? It's looking to be a chilly weekend here in Newport News, Jillian. I'm John Faust here with your weather. Let's take a look at the Doppler. Expect clear skies this week with a chance of rain moving in from the northwestern direction. Now let's take a look at our seven day forecast. All this week expected to be partly cloudy. Sunday, a high of 67 and a low of 50. Monday, a high of 67 and a low of 52. And a high of 67 on Tuesday. On another note, what's been going on in the CNU sports world, Cassie? It was a good weekend for CNU sports. I'm Cassie Vinch, here with your CNU sports update. The men's soccer team kept the momentum going this past weekend as they retained their undefeated title in conference play. As CNU took on Ferrum this past Saturday, they managed a dominating 5-2 win. Winston Mathewson scored two goals in the game and propelled the team to a victory. The USA South tournament begins this week and the captains have secured the number one seed. For them, this means a bye in the first round. Their play begins on Friday as they play in the Final Four in Martinsville, Virginia. The women's volleyball team sure is showing everybody what they got. On Tuesday night, the lady captains won the USA South quarterfinals as they beat Meredith 3-1. The captains had four players that had double-digit kills. The USA South semifinals begin on Friday at 5 and 7.30 p.m., and the championship game will be held on Saturday at 5. CNU football was able to keep their winning streak alive this past Saturday as they took on Ferrum University. The game was tied at halftime on a 91-yard run by Antonio Epps, which is the longest-running play in CNU history, and a 27-yard reverse by Stephen Harris. Senior Tunde Ogun was the difference in the game in the third quarter as the captains defeated Ferrum 28-14. In conference play, the captains are now 4-1 and have a 5-3 record overall. This weekend, CNU football takes on Maryville College at Pomoco Stadium for the last regular season home game. Be sure to check out this and all the USA South tournaments this week and cheer loud to support your captains. All facts and information are provided by CNUsports.com. That wraps it up over here in the sports world. Back to you. Thanks, Cassie. It's always good to keep up with CNU Sports. Now let's find out what's been going on lately with our arts and entertainment anchor, Katie. 
there are always entertaining events going on at CNU Jillian, bringing you your arts and entertainment news. I'm Katie Harden. The Center for Service Learning and Social Entrepreneurship and the Food Bank of the Virginia Peninsula recently held an event to help support the Food Bank and raise awareness over hunger. Um, every year we partner with the Food Bank of the Virginia Peninsula and this year we decided that it would be good to look at the complex reasons for hunger. I mean what the Food Bank does is it feeds the hungry but one of the things we can do as a university is to look at why people are hungry and what some of the solutions are. Our hunger banquet, uh, we have three kinds of food, really yummy food, for about 15% of the world gets to eat good food, and about another 35% um, get to eat like flavored beans and rice, and another 15% of the world's population gets to eat just rice, and everyone else goes hungry. So our hunger banquet is basically giving people food in exact proportion to how the world eats. And then I just mentioned to Carol Hayes, who is our ceramics professor, that it would be interesting to have plates that in some way uh, dealt with hunger and the issues. Each one is different and each one expresses another attitude and, and emotion about hunger. Well, the purpose behind the plates was to create um, create plates that represented some form of hunger and stuff like that, and each people did different things. I was uh, thoroughly impressed by most of the students, how they came out with their ideas. Um, everyone seemed to have their own out to kind of take on this, what the idea of what we were supposed to do was. I liked it, and I thought it was something different because you don't usually see or hear much things about hunger. And so I thought it would be a, a good message to get out to people. And so I was excited about it. Thanks, Victoria. Looks like it was an informative event. Be sure to keep up with the other cool events going on here at CNU. In celebration of Halloween, CAB held a haunted hospital last weekend. The tour throughout these eerie halls started in the operating room, where body parts were dismembered and internal organs were no longer on the insides of the helpless patients. Characters from last year's Tribble Manor were present in the hospital, with new characters entering the scene. CNU TV recently did a special Word on the Street segment on the topic of voting on Election Day. Let's see what we found. Um, I didn't vote today. I was busy all day, so. I did. I did indeed. Um, partially because my mom bothered me about it so much. I did not vote today. Um, I'm usually very pro-voting, but I did not have the time nor the knowledge to vote in this election, so I abstained courteously. I did not vote today because, well, I woke up kind of late, and that's basically it. Um, I didn't vote today, but I voted absentee because I live in Richmond, so I sent in my absentee ballot earlier. And I did not vote today because I didn't know that we were supposed to vote today. And I just didn't bother to once I found out. I did not vote today. My absentee ballot request was received too late. Yes, I did vote um, because it's my duty as an American citizen. Uh, no, I didn't vote, and I don't know what we're voting for. Or is it for the governor? No, I knew about the election actually, but no, because I didn't have a ride home. No, unfortunately I did not vote um, because I did not have time and I also don't even know where my precinct is <laughs> to vote. Um, so yeah, oops. Remember, if you don't exercise your right to vote, you don't have a right to complain. Well, that's it for Arts and Entertainment. Back to you in the studio. Well, that about does it for this episode of Senior TV. I'm Paula Bruzzo. And I'm Jillian Hooper. For more information on any of the stories here today, check out the weekly issue of The Captain's Log. Stay tuned for our next broadcast on November 11th.